Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. What I do know is that this is 4F Beauty. And if I've done my editing right, you are watching me in black and white right now. Because this is the latest instalment of my pick series. How annoying was that? I'm sorry. <laughs> As you would have seen from the thumbnail, the title, and if you read any of it yet, the description. Today I am collabing for, I believe, the fifth time around with my beautiful friend Anne who is on here as Glam 60 Morrison I believe no, why is that woman in her 60s? I'm sorry mm -mm. no, I don't believe it don't believe it however if you want to find out exactly which picture has inspired our looks this time what this looks like in glorious Technicolor how many times I have to do a jump cut and wiggle because of pain and what this looks like in glorious Technicolor then my friend you are in precisely the right place as I have said for some time now and oft here echoed on other less imaginative channels although they are not accompanied by Sammy the Sloth Straw Oh, I get worse. Grab a drink. Grab a snack. Put your feet up. And enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Uh, I apologise if I wiggle a lot today, and there's a lot of jump cuts. Um, but I'm in significant pain so yeah but I need to get this filmed because this film has to go up tomorrow so you will have seen from the intro that this is the latest instalment in my pick series um, and I believe it's the fifth time round with Anne and she chose this picture that I sent her I sent a selection across for her to choose from and she chose this one and I'm so pleased because I have wanted to do this one for so long and nobody had been choosing it. Um, did a bit of research on it. Turns out it's a fruit. I wasn't sure if it was a fruit or a flower but it's a fruit called the Hala fruit or Hala fruit. Uh, it is a large edible fruit made up of numerous segments called keys or cones and is found in Southeast Asia, Eastern Australia, Pacific Islands and Hawaii. Also called the Tahitian screw pine or thatch screw pine, the Hala fruit tree is one of 750 or so trees that belong to the Pandanus species. Sorry, the Pandanus species, P-A-N-D-A-N-U-S. The Halla fruit tree can reach up to 14 metres in height with a spiny trunk that grows between 5 to 11 metres in width. This is a large fruit that can be up to 30 centimetres long, that's 12 inches. Whoa! With dozens to hundreds of segments or keys that are attached together by a core, each one being about 20 centimetres long, so that's about 8 inches. That's a big fruit! But as you can see, it's also beautiful. It almost looks like an exploding planet. Um, for people who are new to this series, have never watched my pick series before. The challenge is, you each work from the same photo. You can use anything that you've got, any palettes, pigments, etc. Blushes paints, anything you want from your current collection rather than buying something new but you can only use colours that are in the picture you can't add colours in so for example 
the fruit itself has a creamy white shaded core and then the keys or the combs run from a pale orange through to a deep red then it's got green bits on the outside it's on a blue table with a black background so basically that's the colors i can use white yellow orange red green blue and black so i can't put brown in it's one of the reasons i made this rule that you can't add colors in because all too often people have say, oh, you have to have a brown to go through the crease as your transition shade. No, you don't. Your transition shade can be any bloody colour. Um, so, yeah, first rule is you can only use colours that are in the picture. Second rule is you don't have to use all the colours if you don't want to. That's it. That's the only two rules. Anything goes. You can do an eye look inspired by it. You can recreate it in paints on your cheek. You can do an amazing rainbow across your face. Whatever uh, you are inspired to do by that photo, that's what you do. And I've had this for a little while now. I still haven't played with it. This is the Norvina Mini Volume 2. haven't even taken the Norvina sticker off the mirror yet. You can see the yellow did come a little bit smashed on the corner, but it's still usable. But you've got yellows, a couple of deeper oranges, some greens. Uh, there is a brown, but I'm not going to use it. So initially I'm going to be playing with these colours. If I need to pull in any other colours, I'll just grab another palette, but I thought I'd give this one a bit of a go today. Uh, this is still a teaching channel, and by virtue of that, and the fact that I'm in excruciating pain, uh, I go at a speed that beginners can keep up with me. I zoom right in tight to my eyes, so even if you're watching me on a reasonably small phone screen, you can still see exactly what's going on. The only time you'll catch me speeding up any of the footage is if I do a cut crease and then I'll do one eye in real time and just speed through the other one. Uh, otherwise it's just it's too long a film and my films are generally around the 40 minute mark. Usually sort of 20 minutes of that is applying the makeup. But then you've got me chatting to you beforehand and chatting to you afterwards. So if you decide you want to skip through to just the tutorial bit, that's absolutely fine. If you want to speed me up, there are speed widgets, feel free to use them. Part of the fact that I'm a teaching channel is explaining the difference between hooded and deep set eyes. Now I have deep set eyes. For a long time I thought they were hooded, until I did proper research and realised they were deep set. Now, a lot of people make this mistake, including some of the bigger beauty gurus. Because the way your eyeshadow wears through the day is very similar between deep set and hooded eyes. But the initial application methods need to be different to get the best look possible. So I'm going to insert a clip in just a moment. It'll be very up close and uptight to just my eyes. I will talk you through how to tell whether you have hooded or deep set eyes and I will fully explain the workarounds for each eye type. Once the clip is done, I will be back to apply some coloured pigments to my eyelids. So, here's your clip. I'll see you at the other end of it. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. 
The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC Paint Pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes. I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye, you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush something like this or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Okay. I'm actually using one of my Blush Tribe brushes. It's just a quite a, a tightly, densely packed blending brush. Whatever the size of the head of the brush, that's how far the colour will blend out. Because um, I want to keep quite a tight control of the colours when I apply them. Sadly, of course, Blush Tribe are not around anymore. But Selma has started another company up called uh, Miali. I'm sure it's called Miali. Uh, so as soon as I can, I'll pick up one of those palettes and see whether it's the same quality as her blush tribe ones were. Right. Um, 
As with her big palettes, these are just named A, B, C, and 1, 2, and 3. So I'm going to go into B1, which is the deeper of the two oranges. Again, as you expect with it, with the Norvena and the ABH, very, very dusty. But I just leave that, I, I just tap off, leave the kick up in the pan, and then pick it back up to continue either building colour up or moving on to the next eye. Always hold the brush at the end to put as little pressure on your eyes as possible. And I'm going to do the Viennese Waltz Blend, which is natural turns towards the nose, a flecker when we get there, and reverse turns to come back again. I always start from the outside edge, because if you dollop too much pigment on, it's much easier to blend it out when your nose isn't in the way. And the reason that I do the Viennese Waltz Blend rather than the windshield wiper, so I've just got an eyelash in my eye I just need to deal with. Just spotted it there. Right. The reason I do the Viennese Waltz Blend rather than the windshield wiper is because I'm 46 years old, I've lost over 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds. Skin on my eyelids moves. This one more so, because I've got these super deep creases here. This was pulled around a lot when I was five years old. Um, by doing the circular Viennese waltz movement, you're gently moving the skin around in both directions, and it helps prevent that tiger striping or pin coding or bar coding you can get. So I'm going to start just above where my natural crease falls, and I'm going to start slowly building the pigment up. How's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. If it hasn't though, I do hope that tomorrow is a better day for you. And if you are at the start of your day, either Showering, hello Christopher. Eating your breakfast or doing your makeup, hello Laura. Then I hope your day is absolutely fabulous. It's quite sweet. My friend Hedda, who has the Hedda Gold channel, the one who sent me all of the Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks, she um. She liked my little how's your day and I hope tomorrow is better if today was shit comment so much. She's actually adapted it to use on her channel. But unlike other less imaginative channels, she's actually credited me with being her inspiration. Isn't that interesting? Right, I'm just going to run this down onto the outer corner here. I may go over this with the deeper green, it depends how the look blends when I get to that stage. I've done a couple of pinker looks the last few days and I was very, very stained eyelids. Worth it though. Right, I always do this eye after doing this eye rather than moving on to the next colour because your eyes are not symmetrical unless you photoshop them at the end of it like James Charles does oh, do you know what, no matter what time I sit down to film my phone starts buzzing it makes no bloody noise at all most of the time when I'm editing or watching YouTube the minute I sit down and press for record that happens Lovely. Um, yeah, like I said, unless you Photoshop your finished results, your eyes are not symmetrical. And depending on how puffy your eyes are one day, or 
you know, with me with my fibro or hay fever, how swollen they may be. You may find, when you sit back and relax your brows, I've done exactly the same shape both sides, and yet you can see this one looks more rounded and this one looks flat. So I can see that I need to bring this bit up here just ever so slightly. So they match. But I wouldn't be able to tell that if I'd already put other colours on and blended it. Right, I'm going to clean this brush on a clean washcloth. And then I'm... Oh, for goodness sake, shut up! Let's see if I put Do Not Disturb on if that will work. Sometimes my Do Not Disturb decides it's not going to work. Right. I'm going to clean the brush off <laughs> on this washcloth. Then I'm going to go in with A3, which is a slightly more apricotty orange, a slightly more pastel orange. And tell you a little bit about my friend Anne, if you don't already know her. I'd watched Anne for quite a while before I actually asked. Right, if you're going to blend two colours together, start off the first bit with half your brush on the colour you're blending with and half off of it. Because that will give you a much smoother blend and will allow you to get a good gradient rather than having a delineated obvious point where it runs from one colour to the next. I hope you can see there there's no like harsh line where one colour stops and the next one starts. Right, so my friend Anne. Um, I've been watching her for quite a while before I actually asked her to collab. Uh, long term viewers will know this is because of the way I was spoken to by a certain larger channel. I mean, don't get me wrong, if people don't want to collab with me, that's absolutely fine. But there's no need to be rude about it. You know? And she was extremely rude. Um, and it kind of knocked my confidence on asking people to collab with me. But I can't remember if I reached out to Anne or if she commented on one of my films about collabing. But we did a pick collab together. And our sense of humour is wickedly similar. I mean, for a start off, the woman does not look like she's in her 60s. If I look that good at 60, I'm going to be a very happy lady. I'm just going to clean this brush off and I'm going to go into A1, the yellow. Um, she has an absolutely wicked sense of humour. She very often shaves her hair off and has a mohawk, which she dyes different colours. I mean, she must be the most amazingly fun nan ever. Um, she too, like me, suffers with chronic pain. So, you know, we, we kind of, we understand each other and, and you know, we, we understand the limitations on what we can and can't do and the frustrations that come along with that. Um... You know, it's, it is frustrating when you see people, for me it's when I see people older than me who can go for a walk without needing a stick. You know, they go out and they walk their dogs or you see, there's we've got quite a few fit grannies around us where we live. You see out and about walking their dogs and I just think that 
that's the thing I miss the most, just being able to grab keys, phone, bottle of water and just walk, you know? I used to walk miles and miles and miles. Um, especially on Sundays, that was... You know, I'd, I'd cook Sunday lunch for me and Mum. And then I'd go and walk it off, you know? Also gave me some time away from me and Mum. But that's a different story. For another time but you know it's so frustrating and she gets that she understands that uh, but we always say if we got together we'd sort of they'd have to put a warning out on the town before we went out and we'd probably create absolute havoc and end up getting arrested knowing us well let's face it, it wouldn't be the first time that I'd flashed people Admittedly, it was a few years ago now, and boobs were a little bit higher than they are at the moment. But I've done some weird things in my past. Good kids, do not copy me. Listen to what Auntie Angie says, not what Auntie Angie does. But yeah, Anne's just such a lovely woman, and she does some amazingly bright looks as well. Um, she's absolutely not afraid of colour, which is awesome. Um, I love collabing with people who love colour because I think it's fairly obvious that I quite like colour myself. <laughs> right, um, I'm going to grab this little tiny brush. I don't know if it's a packing brush or a lip brush or what it is, but it's tiny and uh, get my this is my revolution cucumber spray it's nearly finished which I will use to wet the brush after I have applied pigment to it and I'm going to go into C2 wow this is soft this is almost like super shock shadow soft this is way way softer and more crumbly than I'm used to with Anastasia's shadows okay so I've packed both sides spray the brush and dry this ferrule off the easiest way to do that is tuck it in your knuckles and spin if you don't do that and you let moisture get down in the bristles, it'll loosen the glue and then you won't have a brush. You'll have a stick. Hmm. Right, the reason I like little brushes like this is they get right down into that corner. And I'm going to use that. Just pull this green out. Dry the brush, go back in again. Wonder if this would apply without me wetting it. Probably gonna get a hell of fall at yeah. Actually I think I think this applies better dry than it does wet. So just bear that one in mind if you're using this palette. And this is obviously the fruit bit that you eat. And then the hard green spiny bit on the outer side. Apparently the easiest way to get into the fruit is to take a pair of pliers to it, pull a couple of the cones out and then you can easily get to the other ones. Apparently it pulls apart like a pineapple does. Not that I've ever managed to get a pineapple to pull apart for me, but... Mm. Now, with my left eye because I have got that deep creasing, I do have to apply the shadow a little bit differently because otherwise I end up with it packing loosely into these creases and then throughout the day it ends up falling into my eye and it's very, very painful. And the way I do that without causing any further damage 
is I look at the width of the creasing, which is about my fingernail width, go the same distance again, then put my finger on the lid, and I just stretch the lid out far enough that I've flattened the creases so that I can apply the shadow and blend it firmly onto the lid. I'm not pulling it out to my ear roll, and as soon as I'm done, I gently let go rather than just let it, letting go and let it fling back. Oh, can you see what I mean about how soft that is? How it's just breaking up as you put your brush in it. Not overly keen on shimmers that are like this because you end up wasting so much of them because you end up losing a lot to fall out as you can see I'm just finessing that right I'm just going to use the very tip of the bristles just to smudge the edge into the matte orange that I've done. I don't think I am going to deepen it up with the green. I think I'm going to leave it quite bright and spring-like. Okay, my lovelies. I'm going to pause you uh, while I pop some base products on, foundation, etc. And I will be back to finish this eye look off with you. Now, I'm going to have to wait for the next time I press record to talk to you, but for you, my darlings, it's going to be absolutely instant. Right, my lovelies, I am back. As usual, I have done my soap brows. Um, I'll be using uh, from a UK indie brand called Pink Honey. This is the Honey Glue in Strawberry Sherbet. Basically, you stick your spoolie in there. They say to wet it. I actually don't. I put mine in dry. Brush my brows through. That leaves them slightly sticky. Pardon me. I then went into B3, which was the dark green in here. And using the other end of it, basically brushed the colour through my brows. So because I used the soap dry rather than wet, A, it means that the powder has something to stick to when you're applying the colour to your brows, and B, it sets them. So it's like a double whammy. Right, I'm going in with this flat top brush and I'm going to go into B3 again that I just used for my brows to line my lower lash. Regular viewers will know I can't actually put anything in my waterline because I've always had watery eyes anyway. Add to that, one of my fibro symptoms is runny eyes. Add to that, the high pollen count and my hay fever and my neighbour dragging their table across the kitchen floor instead of lifting it. Um, and if I put anything on my waterline, basically it's Niagara Falls, so uh, there is no point. Now I'm going to go in with the Tarte Graveyard Girl brush, which is flat topped and chunky, a bit like me. But you can use any kind of smudger brush or dense packer brush. Um, I'm going to go into A2, which is the lighter of the green mattes, and just use that to soften and blend. The lower lash line, just smoke it out a little bit. Obviously, if you can put colour in your waterline, you could do a yellow, you could do a green, you could do an orange, uh, a nude. You could do black if you want, but I think that would be a bit harsh against 
these colours. There, lush. And now I'm gonna grab if I can find it, there we go. The Gerard Cosmetics they call it star powder in grace this is what I love about their highlighters it has like a little plastic window so when you're traveling it's extra secure that you're not going to get or less likely to get broken powders on arrival put it that way this is just a cheap lip brush that I bought probably about a decade ago now on eBay but it's great just for applying under the tail of the brow and in a corner which I like to bring along under my tear duct and just blend in with the shades that I've run under the eye where I can't put things in my waterline I just feel like that finishes the look off nicely right my lovelies I'm going to pause you one more time uh, while I go and pop some more highlight on my face, put some mascara on, choose a lippy and do something with my hair and I'll be back with my finished look. Again, for you, instant. God, I look awkward when I wink. I am back. I am really sorry. I have had to put the fan on. It is ridiculously hot in my kitchen. And it is still only half past seven in the morning. Right, uh, I used the Gerard highlight again. I do have a discount code for Gerard. It is affiliated. All my codes are listed in the description box and clearly state if I earn from them or not. The mascara is the Catrice Glamondol Volume Waterproof Mascara. This is an absolute dupe for a Benefit Bad Gal Bang, but it's cheaper and it's waterproof. And then the lipstick is one of the Charlotte Tilbury ones that my friend Hedda sent me, and it's Coachella Coral. So, here's the picture again of the Halo Fruit or Halo Fruit. What do you think? I think I've represented it well in terms of the makeup look, or would you have done something different? Let me know. If you were going to be um, collabing with me today, which palette would you have used, and which colours call to you? Now, I know Little Miss Nona is going to love this because she loves orange eyeshadow, um, so she's going to be super happy with this one. But um, let me know, let me know in the comments what you think and which colours drew you in from that picture. I need to wiggle, I'm sorry. Okay, I'll probably have cut that out. Now, if you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you are still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing you, but they're leaving my films in your feed. So it's not obvious that you have been what a car, cut off from the end of the list. Um, so yeah, please double check that once you've done that. Oi, oi, oi. Sorry, pain spasm. Oh. <sighs> okay. Once you've done that, um, a like, a comment, Maybe a share would be really lovely, please, to help me try and beat that YouTube algorithm. Once you have done that, I'm going to need you to go across and visit my beautiful friend Anne and check out her look. See which palette or palettes she's using. I don't know, I haven't seen her film yet. Uh, and uh, what her look is like. One of the things that I love about this series is, you know, this is the 47th, 48th episode, 
that I'm doing today. I've lost count. I have to have a look at my book. Um, and of all of these, there's only been about two occasions where the looks have been similar. And even then, although they were similar, they were different enough to be different looks. So I love the fact that two people can look at the same picture and be inspired by different things from it. So pop over to Anne's channel, give her a like, tell her you've come from the 4F beauty family. Um, leave her a comment. If you're not already subscribed to her, what are you doing? She's amazing. Hit the subscribe button. You won't regret it, I promise you. If you are new here, if you've come here either from Anne's channel or you tripped over this somehow, hi, hello, welcome. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've made it this far through, I'm guessing there was something about the film that enticed you. Even if it was just me blethering on randomly about all kinds of things in what I'm told is quite a soothing voice. It'd be lovely if you'd like to join the 4F family too. Again, super easy. Hit the red subscribe button, turn it grey, then you ring my bell, ring my bell, and say yes, and all notifications, and keep saying that until YouTube stop asking you the same damn question in 16 different ways. Then hopefully they'll send you, I don't know, one in four of my films? My husband's subscribed to me, even he doesn't get all the notifications, or he gets them a month late. That's helpful. Thanks, YouTube. That being said, there are an awful lot of other films you can watch. There are the, all the preceding episodes of this pick challenge, if this has piqued your interest. Um, there's other collabs, there's challenges, there's tags, there's product reviews, just straight makeup tutorials. I even read you my favourite poem. So there's going to be something on here, somewhere, that you're going to enjoy. So basically, if you want a bit of me time, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, pick a playlist, and indulge, my darlings. Right, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is your stay fabulous, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.